Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Dr. Yu Yuchi lectures. In today's discussion, we have a very important point for you guys. That is the difference between two interesting things, neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. What is the very simple difference between these two points? Well, let's speak a little bit slowly. So let's start our discussion. That is the difference between. Uh, so first of all, you guys must know that we have certain messages uh, being generated in our body so those messages are actually conveyed by neurons two types of neurons are there responsible to convey the message throughout your body so first of all the neuron that is uh, first of all responsible to convey the first message is supposed to be forwarded by one neuron so that neuron is called as a presynaptic neuron the message uh, will be uh, a kind encoded by certain methods so then according to that message the chemicals will be generated will be produced will be synthesized uh, in this neuron then those chemicals will be released into the space between these two uh, neurons one neuron and second neuron now this neuron uh, this space is called as synapses what synapses s e s not s i e s if you write it s i e s you are actually committing a mistake so this s i e s is not this topic this is another topic and if you guys know write down in the comment box what is s i s means what is s y n a p s i s this spelling this term used for well the spelling or the term used here by is synapses what synapses s e s now this is telling us the space this is actually the space between two neurons this and this neuron the neuron from which the chemical is released is called presynaptic neuron and the neuron which is receiving the chemical that is called as post synaptic neuron now this space is called synapses because of the space these neurons are given the name synapses presynapses post synapses presynapses post synapses the neuron before is called presynaptic neuron the neuron after is called as uh, post synaptic neuron i hope you got the point so what is happening here by the chemical is released from the presynaptic neuron that release chemical will come here in the synapses in the space between two neurons then that chemical will bind with the next neuron and then accordingly the action will be the message will be forwarded to this neuron then this neuron uh, will show the action according to the message according to the neuron according to the chemical that is uh, conveying the message so actually this chemical will stimulate certain kinds of uh, receptors hereby then those will actually uh, tell the neuron to do the job so what is happening let's uh, discuss a little bit more in detail what's happening hereby so now here we have the presynaptic neuron this is actually a kind of magnified a little bit more and this is the post synaptic neuron so here we go with another structure of the post synaptic neuron the post synaptic neuron here it is the presynaptic neuron here it is so what is happening very simple the chemical is actually synthesized hereby the message is given so a message actually generates hereby msg so chemical will be synthesized a kind of that chemical is synthesized here and slowly gradually this this, this chemical will start coming to this end point so what will happen then this is actually a vesicle in the vesicle the chemicals are there that vesicle will be actually a kind uh, uh, diffused uh, with the membrane of this uh, neuron presynaptic neuron membrane is hereby so what will happen then slowly the chemicals will be released cut now these released chemicals there are there are certain types of chemicals so these chemicals have got choice to go uh, to certain uh, receptor so this is the neuron with us post synaptic neuron on this neuron we have certain receptors responsible to uh, do their jobs so what is happening the chemical that comes here if a chemical one of these chemicals number one comes and binds with this kind of receptors noun is metallotropic receptors also called as g protein receptors uh, and you guys know that we have certain types of g protein receptors gs gi and gq receptors these are the classes the types of the uh, metallotropic receptors now these metallotropic receptors are also called as g proteins okay so now guess what if this chemical binds to this g protein and shows enteral action then this chemical will be called as neuromodulator what neuromodulator this chemical will be given the name neuromodulator neuromodulator and if what the same chemical binds with this type of receptor now this is called as inotropic receptors so we have certain types of receptors on the uh, post synaptic neurons and throughout the body we have certain other types of receptors available but now here i'm clearing the point the difference that is between the neuro transmitters and neuromodulators so just concentrate on that okay so what happens now if the chemical number one binds here and shows action via 
shows the action in this postsynaptic neuron by means of uh, this type of receptor, G protein coupled receptor, neuro, uh, uh, new, new, what is this? Metabotropic type of receptors, G protein, metabotropic receptor receptors, and GSGIGQ, whatever is the receptor. I'm just clearing the point. Some guys have studied the metabotropic receptors, some guys have studied this with the name of G protein, some guys have studied this with the name of GSGIGQ, and some guys forget whatever, whatever they have studied. I'm telling all these names because that uh, whatever the guy is watching this type of lecture, so that guy must get the topic uh, in an easy way. Well, what is happening here, right? The chemical is released and that chemical binds with the, this type of receptor, whether it is GS, GI, GQ, whether it is G protein, whether it is metabotropic, whatsoever this, this, this receptor. So it must be this receptor, okay? So if the chemical binds with this receptor, then that chemical shows action via this receptor in this neuron. So then this neurotransmitter, this chemical is called as neuromodulator. This chemical is called as neuromodulator. Now, if this chemical, chemical number two, let's give it the name, chemical number two. Now, if this is released and this comes and finds the path towards the inotropic receptor and binds to this receptor and shows the internal action, INT internal ACT action. So internal action is shown in the post synaptic neuron by this chemical, then this chemical is named as neurotransmitter. What? Neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter. So this chemical is then called as neurotransmitter. Now what is making the difference? That is the receptor. What type of receptor is interacting with the chemical? The same chemical is called a neuromodulator and the same chemical is called as neurotransmitter. But the point is interaction. If this chemical is interacting with the G protein, GS, GI, GQ, G protein, or metabotropic receptors in short. So if this chemical is interacting with the metabotropic receptors, then this is known as neuromodulator, neuromodulator. And if this chemical is interacting with the inotropic receptor, then this chemical will be given the name neurotransmitter. This is the very point that is confusing our students. What is the difference between neurotransmitters and neuromodulators? Very simple, my dears. It is just the chemical that is getting interaction with the receptor. It is all about the receptors. If the receptor is Give, uh, receiving a chemical uh, and that chemical is interacting with the receptor if it is metabotropic then that will be neuromodulator if the chemical is interacting with the inotropic receptors then, be, then, then that chemical will be given the name as neurotransmitter that is the very difference so certain points like uh, certain examples are here with us uh, acetylcholine, dopamine, GABA, glycine, histamine, serotonin these are all neurotransmitters why? because they bind with the inotropic receptors and then they show the reactions got and uh, guess what we have dopamine, histamine, neuronorepinephrine, serotonin, octopine, acetylcholine you might have observed a repetition hereby Acetylcholine is here, dopamine is here and here, norepinephrine, uh, no, no, sorry for that, serotonin is here and there. So certain examples are repeated hereby. So then what is what is this, this portion written for? <laughs> Very simple, my dears. Now, this is actually telling you guys that uh, there are certain chemicals. They are called neurotransmitters once and second time they are called as neuromodulators. Why? If they are interacting with the G proteins, with the metabotropic receptors, then they are actually metabotropic, uh, they are actually neuromodulators. These chemicals will be named as neuromodulators. And if they are interacting with the inotropic receptors, then they will be named as neurotransmitters. So that's what I'm telling you guys. Chemical is there, the same chemical is there. Sometimes it will be called as neurotransmitters, and sometimes uh, it will be called as the same chemical will be called as neuromodulator. So chemicals are there with us. They are neurotransmitters as well neuromodulators. And certain chemicals are there, they are only called as neuromodulators. They are not interacting with the inotropic receptors. Like we have some encaphalins, endorphins, endorphins. So most of the time they interact with the metabotropic receptors. Some guys call these as G protein receptors, and some guys, some guys know that these are actually the GSG and GQ receptors. So, whatever is your information uh, about this, these metabotropic receptors, just learn this that if the chemical is interacting with these with this receptor, then that chemical is known as neuromodulator. If it is interacting with this kind of receptor, iotropic receptor, that chemical is known as neurotransmitter. So, certain chemicals can be uh, both 
neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. Okay, just like we have example that is in front of us, acetylcholine, acetylcholine, and certain others are also available. So now the same acetylcholine sometimes bind with this, sometimes bind with this. So if there is supposed to be a slow action being performed in the body, acetylcholine will go towards the metabotropic receptors because these receptors show very slow type of action. The reaction is very slow, and uh, while if you talk about the inotropic receptors, they show a quick type of action. So if acetylcholine binds here, a quick type of actions will be shown, and if acetylcholine binds here, a moderate type of actions will be shown, a slow type, long-lasting type. And the very second difference is that certain chemicals, those are uh, which are only uh, neuromodulators. So what is the difference of those chemicals then? Now sometimes uh, uh, neuromodulators they show a very long life. So in short, if I tell you that. Uh, we have neurotransmitters. If these neurotransmitters are released, they show very specific action. We have one neuron here, by another one is here. So neuron to neuron, I just said neuron, okay? One neuron is going to interact with another neuron. Just neuron to neuron interaction is there in case of neurotransmitters. But if it is about neuromodulators, okay, neuromodulators, so they show a very long type of action. Uh, when they are released, they can interact with this neuron and with uh, some other neurons and uh, with some other neurons somewhere else in the body. So they've got neuromodulators. Uh, chemicals, which are called neuromodulators, they show very long type of action. They have very long range. Uh, they are actually uh, having a variety of actions, okay? So a group of neurons can be interacted. Uh, this neuron can show interaction with a group of neurons. This chemical can show interaction with a group of neurons. Which one? Neuromodulators. Whereas neurotransmitters, they just show interaction, a neuron to neuron interaction is there. And uh, they are very short time and uh, they show very quick actions and uh, stuff like that is there. So the very point is that, which you guys must remember time and again, I'm repeating this point, that is, if the chemical is interacting with a metabotropic receptor, that chemical is called as a neuromodulator. And if the chemical is interacting with the ionotropic receptor, that chemical is called as neurotransmitter and one chemical can perform both job sometimes it can bind with the metabotropic sometimes it can bind with a inotropic receptor so if it is binding with the metabotropic action will be slow if it is binding with the inotropic then the action will be very quick so slow action quick action slow action is metabotropic inotropic quick action and one one new one chemical can perform both the job one chemical can be neurotransmitter one time it can be the neuromodulator at second time so this is what that i'm telling you guys uh since the very beginning <laughs> i hope you got and if still you have a confusion anywhere you can drop that in, in the comment box and don't forget telling your friends about dr uut lecture